Hey there, friend, and welcome back. My name is Sarah Rusk, and I am so excited to be here with you today. Oh my goodness. There have been so many different changes and shifts and aha and realizations that have just been coming up. And I am so excited to share it with you in the hopes that my story can help serve you. So I have been going through a roller coaster of emotions lately, and I am learning to not be that person who has something trigger me and then have to essentially beat it to death to figure out, you know, where did this come from in my past? Why is this happening? Um, however, <laughs> I have had quite a bit of moments come up lately where I've gone back to that dark place in my mind and then I've thought to myself, why? Why is this happening? And I have seen a series of patterns throughout my life showing up in these moments. And, you know, they say that healing is most certainly not a linear journey. And now I'm starting to see why. Because <laughs> literally things are just like circling and churning. And, you know, as I'm growing more and more as a more conscious and aware being, these things are going to come. Like the more that you do this work, friend, the more challenges are going to be thrown your way. But the thing is, like, they aren't here to set you back. They're here to encourage you to grow and to, again, take another page from Kyle Cease's book to help you evolve. And I actually want to kick this uh, episode off with an email from Mike Dooley, who writes notes from the universe. And I've got one here that's right on par with uh, what I want to talk about. And it says, it is an absolute law, Sarah, that every challenge, fear, or loss you encounter bears gifts far more valuable than the price of the trouble they cause. I think it's law 123.ily, the universe. And then the PS is, and remember, Sarah, no loss ever goes unsettled in the long run. And I totally agree because I'm reflecting back on all the pain that I have been experiencing within the past year and a half. And being able to stop and take a look back and see, you know, not to necessarily give it meaning, but to see why it happened and understanding that it had to happen because it had to really humble me and show me where my, you know, weak spots were, all my different Achilles heels that were out there. So that way then I know that those are trigger points for me. That way then when they come up again, I can evolve grow and transcend it and turn it into something totally different. Things that made me angry and that would set me off a couple of weeks ago don't bother me anymore. And it's not because I white knuckled it until, you know, I made it okay. I kept letting it come up and I was like, you're angry. Okay, cool. Tell me about it. Why are you angry? And it turns out that the anger was a protection for fear. So underneath the layer of anger, it was fear. I was scared and I didn't realize that I was scared. And now I understand and recognize that I am scared. Even though I there's nothing in my environment that will cause me any pain, nobody in my life will hurt me, I still get scared. And there's a huge one that I have when it comes to my house and being offended and protective and protecting myself. I've always had, since my dad died, I've always had a hard time with men being in the house. Because if you think about it, the last time a man was in here, like, I got abused and, you know, almost died multiple times. And, you know, my mom has had guy friends in the past where they had, we actually helped out this one guy who um, wasn't homeless per se, but he was trying to get his business up and going. And I worked for him for a little bit, but he lived here. And this was shortly after my dad had passed. And while we were trying to do a good thing, um, it wasn't even a year since he passed and there was already a new person here. And it wasn't like, it was just, we were helping a friend and I was having a very hard time with that. And then it led to somebody else who used to come over and, you know, he would help out a lot and he was a good friend of my mom's and same thing, I would immediately shut down. Now I'm having issues with um, my sister and her boyfriend who really great guy like he's I'm so happy that my sister found someone who's just like her um and they just they're so good for each other I lock myself in my office because I'm just like I I just I lose my mind and I'm like I have to get out of here I have to go I have to run and I had this aha moment yesterday as to why I have this pattern and now that I can shine a light on it I can start fixing it because you know when you go into somebody a normal household when you go into somebody's house like 
you start to feel comfortable, especially when it's like a partner and stuff. Um, I am working on releasing that trauma that I have around having men in the house. Specifically too, we had, my sister was dating somebody who was very much so like, you need a man in the house. And I don't like it when people tell me what to do. This is a new boundary that I'm learning to like put in there as like, hey, let me think for myself. Thank you very much. Um, and I get really nervous that something is going to happen that I'm not okay with and then me not be able to speak up and then have it happen and then spiral and then like be hurt or something like that. So this is this is what plays out in my brain. Um, and now that I recognize the pattern, I can start refocusing and reworking how I think about these situations. Everything is fine. There has never been any indicator and any indication that like any of us are in any danger. This is just the trauma patterns being seen. And now I understand why like sleep has not come great for me or easily for me the past couple of days. Um, and it's this fear pattern that is really working its way and trying to dissolve, essentially. So I'm just so proud of myself for being able to recognize this and bring it to light and understand that it's something in my past that I keep trying to shove into my future. And yeah, so I hope that this story is able to serve somebody. The, that's the only reason why I'm talking about this is just because I understand where these triggers are coming up and I don't want to keep these patterns in my life. Like I would love for things to be easy breezy and to, you know, for me just to be able to say, hey, I'm not quite comfortable or hey, I'm going to excuse myself, but still be able to allow other people in here. But that defense mode, I mean, it's been 10 years, the defense mode still comes up and now I see it and I had not seen it. I was labeled as being, you know, nasty, reclusive, all of this stuff and that's not the case i was just scared and i didn't realize that i was scared so the nasty came out to protect the scared that that inner child the angry sarah who couldn't defend herself for so many years had to be there to protect the weaker versions of sarah but now we're at a different version of sarah and i'm here for it and i'm excited and there's just so many amazing things that have been happening. And again, I'm so excited to be here to share it with you. One last thing that I quickly want to add on here too, um, just to kind of tie it up in a nice little neat bow. When I was first going through all of this stuff, I kept thinking to myself, like, why me? When is this pain going to end? When is all of this, like this nightmare going to end? And what I am understanding and recognizing is I had to go through all of this stuff in order for me to heal it, transcend it. I had to go through feeling scared about finances to relax in this unknown and allow the universe to support me and show me all these opportunities to show me that there's opportunities in every single moment i still think back to um a couple of days ago when i was driving to my friend's house um or even before that i posed the challenge to myself that i was going to take more pictures in any moment i would just find something and take pictures of it and i was presented with an opportunity and i turned around because it was just, I was just awestruck by it. I turned around and I went back and I took the pictures and I'm so happy I did. And I kept telling myself, I was like, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. So I am just being more open to opportunity. And the more that I'm being open to seeing different kinds of opportunity, the more that I'm seeing them. And it's really cool. And it comes in different ways than just money. And because of that, I feel like more doors are going to be opening. But as I was going through everything, especially last year, and especially some of the stuff from this year, I'm realizing again that those are my blind spots and that they are actually here to help me and serve me and show me what still needs to be worked on. And looking back, now I understand why. Even though we don't really need an understander, it's an understander trying to figure everything out. It can just be, but for my little black and white brain, it's helping me to allow things to just be without me having to think it to death. So yeah, just wanted to throw that little explanation out there. So friend, Thank you so much for watching this little video of mine. If you would not mind giving this video a thumbs up, it would mean the world to me. No matter what, no matter what, just promise me you'll keep singing. Okay, friend?